I'm High Hill Knight. Welcome to my channel. On my Facebook page, I posted a question about President Trump's travel ban, and I wanted some input from my friends, particularly my Republican friends. Uh, so if you'd like to see that post, the link is listed below. And this video will be mainly directed toward the folks that actually responded to that post on Facebook. Uh, first, I'm going to offer direct responses to the individuals, and then I will give my overall assessment of the travel ban situation. If you do choose to look at that post, bear in mind that I just happened to post it in between the periods when a federal judge put a temporary stoppage on the executive order and the uh, Court of Appeals reinforced that uh, stoppage. So it uh, just fits uniquely in that time frame uh, as you read it. All right, so to Julianne, uh, I enjoyed the items of scripture that you offered. You seem to have a reasonable and compassionate heart. Uh, thank you so much for also mentioning the instability of the nations that are in the travel ban. Uh, that was very helpful. Uh, to Greg, thanks for getting the topic on track early within the discussion. Things can get so heated very swiftly in politics, so I appreciate that the focusing you offered early in the discussion make sure everything stayed on track. Uh, with that stated, I don't think it's really hypocritical of Trump to have spent years bashing Obama but rely on his administration's intelligence. Uh, the nature of politics has become worse and worse over the years. Uh, too often, a party or a politician will put the bad mouth on opponents, despite the fact that those accusing people have a track record of doing the exact same thing. Uh, the wrong side is wrong because it's the uh, other side. You know, the other side does it, it's wrong, but if they do it, it's fine. And when it comes to Donald Trump specifically, uh, this is a person that spent years questioning the citizenship status of President Obama, you know, demanding for years to see that long-form birth certificate. And not only that, but he also spent several weeks uh, throwing shade towards actress Kristen Stewart, for cheating on her boyfriend several years ago. In fact, uh, Kristen Stewart recently hosted Saturday Night Live and she showed the tweets as part of her monologue. Uh, now, Donald Trump, a man whose second wife was a mistress from his first marriage, put the bad mouth on a person that cheated. You know, that's just ridiculous, but you know, that's the type of man we're dealing with. So in the nature of politics and nature of the man itself is totally not surprising that he'll spend years uh, complaining about the Obama administration, then once he's in charge, everything's hunky-dory and fine and reliable and believable. Uh, and then now to Kyoko, you know, thank you very much for expressing your uh, reasonably cautious loyalty to our new president. Uh, with that said, you are incorrect to say that the media and public went full retard with calling the executive order a Muslim ban. I mean, in one of your comments, you mentioned crying wolf. So I offer another old saying, if it walks like a duck, swims like a duck, and quacks like a duck, then it's probably a duck. So you got to remember, throughout the campaign, Trump wanted our country to have uh, new restrictions for Muslims. He called for our government to have a total and complete shutdown of Muslims entering our country. Those were his words a total and complete shutdown of Muslims entering the country. And he mentioned that throughout his campaign. Once he's elected, in less than 30 days of being president, he makes an executive order that blocks several countries, all of which just happen to be Muslim countries. You know, that's supposed to be coincidence based on intelligence reports. Now, that's plausible. You're like, yes, that is plausible. But it's incredibly suspicious. You know, it's plausible that the intelligence reports are legit. And it's plausible that the president's actions are legit. On the other hand, if it bans countries that are Muslim, does not ban any countries that aren't Muslim, and the guy signing the order spent months demanding a ban against Muslims, then it's probably a Muslim ban call it what you want, it appears very much like a Muslim ban. 
So now to my general thoughts about all of this, well, taking in, uh, everyone's input and having to think about it for a few days. Let's say that it's just fortuitous coincidence that the new administration does have this intel that justifies uh, Trump's suspicions. Let's say that the intel about those countries are correct. Uh, there's still the lack of countries that have actual history of terrorism against America being on that list, that is a problem. It's a real problem, even if the intel is legitimate. Uh, now, hopefully everyone's seen the movie The Warriors or familiar enough with the movie The Warriors because I've had to use The Warriors. Uh, imagine a person is running for mayor of New York and he says, the gangs are out of control. The gangs are all over the place. We need to stop the gangs. We need to uh, control the gangs. We need to rally the gangs. We need to arrest the gangs. They're committing crime. They're committing... Uh, vandalism, they're destroying our neighborhoods, they're terrorizing our people, we gotta control the games, we gotta stop the games, we gotta contain the games, we gotta do something about the games, we gotta stop the games, we gotta get a handle on these games. And then he gets into office, and again, in less than 30 days, he puts a blockade on a certain block, a certain uh, street in New York, saying that it's for our protection, saying that we have intel that, uh, there's a danger from this area. We need to block it off and get it contained. Okay, great. You know, what, what, what block's being contained? Who, what gang are we going after? The orphans. The blockade is the territory of the orphans. And, you, and everyone else says, well, wait a minute. The orphans haven't really done anything in the past 40 years. I mean, we honestly forgot they were even there. <laughs> Why are we blocking the orphans? Well, no, we have intel that says that the orphans, yeah, there's something serious about could happen with orphans. we got to block that area. Okay, but what about the warriors or the baseball furies or the electric executioners? You know, those guys have done major damage over the past couple of years. Why are we not blocking those areas? Should we block those areas too? At least one of them that have definitive recent attacks and problems with our nation oh no 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 we, we can't block everything we you know we can't just shut down everything we gotta do it systematically and we're focusing on the orphans yeah but not one of those trees not the lizzies or the rogues you know they have been doing stuff to us shouldn't we block at least one of those territories and then you add the fact <laughs> that several of those territories have business ties to the mayor, you know, like his restaurants are there, or uh, one of his best friends owns an amusement park on Coney Island, or, you know, there's various uh, connections to those other gang territories. It just raises more suspicion. So for there not to be at least one territory with definitive recent actions against the city is problematic and bizarre and weird for us just to take the person's word for it and then add the fact that those non-block territories have business relations which may or may not still be tied because the mayor won't disclose his financial information or his uh, tax return information or his documentation to prove that he has absolutely no ties to these other former business associates and territories and companies, you know, it becomes very suspect. But even if you take those business things out, it's still the problem of why are we blocking a territory that has barely done anything for the past 40 years, and yet these other territories that have done stuff aren't on the list, not just one. It's just... Now, many of you have encouraged me to give Trump a chance, and I'm trying to. I honestly am. I do complain a lot, but seriously, I am trying to give the administration a chance. Uh, but it's so difficult for me to do that when there are so many things around the administration that call to question his mindset, the administration's mindset, and their policy decisions. Uh, and it's not just a matter of this executive order coming for Donald Trump. I mean, if Ted Cruz or Marco Rubio or Hillary Clinton or even Bernie Sanders 
has suddenly issued a travel ban or whatever kind of ban they want to call it on this territory is within less than a month of being president, then I would be concerned. However, those people have years of experience in government. They have some trust credit for, with me and with the American people. I didn't like a lot of policies of George W. Bush. However, when the, the administration wanted to go to war with Saddam Hussein, they offered evidence of the potential threats to our nation. You know, I remember General Colin Powell uh, showing those pictures that uh, were stockpiles of weapons of mass destruction or factories for weapons of mass destruction. Uh, now, some of that evidence was proven to be faulty. Some of the evidence was proved to be wrong. But still, they put forward that information to get, hopefully, as many people on board with the war efforts that they were going to and take. Uh, then there was uh, President Obama. You know, when he said, if you like your doctor, you can keep your doctor. I didn't believe him. I figured he was either lying or greatly misinformed about how business works, especially when you toss in a giant change to business as usual. But still, he did tour the country explaining the benefits of the Affordable Care Act, and his administration made the case about it, and uh, it got enacted. Of course, the Republicans tried like 60-something times to get a repeal, but still, uh, they did put forward some information before just tossing it into the nation. Uh, so they established some you know, credit as both experienced people in government and going forward to the public first to say, hey, this is what's happening, and this is what we're going to do, and this is why. Uh, but Trump and his administration, they don't have credit yet, okay? Trump's credit is so bad that there were international protests against him the day after his inauguration, okay? International, worldwide protests, including Antarctica, Okay, you guys appreciate how crappy someone's reputation has to be in order for people in Antarctica to get out in March against you? <laughs> Antarctica? You know, I'm glad that several of you do have uh, trust, credit, and faith in Trump. You know, I I'm honestly glad, and I want to get there. I do. That's why I turn to you guys, because I have my feelings. And I turn to you guys to give me another set of input so I can make a more informed decision on how I feel. But when it comes to Trump and his administration, it's just so difficult. And bear in mind, we're less than a full month, less than 30 days of his term of office. So yeah, it's pretty hard for me to uh, have trust credit with uh, Trump. Here's what I'd like to happen. The president's administration offer the public, or at least the courts, definitive, reliable evidence that those countries that have been quiet all this time and are on the list do in fact present a clear and present and immediate danger. You know, prove that their rush to action was flawed, but their decision of action was justified. Because that's why the federal uh, uh, court of appeals upheld the uh, blockage of the ban is like, wait, hey, we need more evidence. We need significant evidence. So I hope the administration provides that significant evidence or undo the current executive order, just you know, wipe it off, just erase it, and then implement another executive order that is better written, better targeted, and better executed, okay? The new order should be accompanied by evidence, okay? Uh, not alternative facts, actual provable evidence, but yeah, you know, just scrap it and start anew. I don't really want a travel ban, but you know, I know he's going to do it, so scrap it and just redo it, be smarter, be better. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not going to hold my breath that either of those two happen. Instead of possibilities A and B, here's what will probably happen. Okay, the executive order will be in limbo. Uh, until it reaches the Supreme Court, then it'll be either affirmed, which would give this president and future presidents even more authoritative power than the Patriot Act already does, or 
the executive order will be defeated, in which case President Trump will go on social media and, and have another one of his giant temper tantrums and say this about the Supreme Court and that about the judges and this about the process and that's sad and this is so-called and this is wrong and there's a whole lot of air quotes and a whole lot of craziness and it gets so outrageous that not only does it get in hot water with the judicial branch, but the legislative branch might also have to step in and say something uh, about the president, okay? Uh, that's what I envision happening. And with this executive order, it should have been Trump's first, I told you so. It should have been something that shows that he and his administration know what they're doing. You know, despite all the crazy antics and the inflammatory tweets and the mainstream media bickering, you know, this executive order should have been the three-point field goal that turned the tide of the game. Uh, that game being the worldwide, including Antarctica, perception of Trump and his administration. Instead, the ball was blocked by our own teammate, okay? That teammate being the Republican judge, okay? <laughs> uh, and then the special teams managed to recover the ball and took a knee. Uh, that would be the federal appeals court, uh, the court of appeals. I don't expect perfect, but Trump and his administration messed up this play big time, and we're not even into a full month of his term of office. Not a full month. You know, so whether we call it a Muslim ban, travel ban, Middle East ban, ragtag ban, ray ban, block everyone except business affiliates ban, gold ban, medicated cream, smoky and the bandit. Woke like an Egyptian by the bangles, banned from the USA. Whatever it is, they screwed up. So if you're going to do something, do it right. Do it well. Do it patiently. Do it with proof. Or if I can reword a bit of scripture, do unto others that have actually done stuff to us. At least one of them. All right, thank you very much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. I greatly appreciate it. Everyone's input, even though we do disagree with some points, I always enjoy chatting with these subjects about you guys. All right, feel free to leave whatever comments you want in the comment section. Feel free to share this video. And remember, find inspiration everywhere.